Welcome back to this uh, video series on using Git for version controlling your research projects. In the last video, we saw how to set up a remote repository uh, and how to push all the uh, work that you have done so far in your local computer up to the remote repository and how you can view in the web browser. And we used GitHub um, as the remote code hosting service. Uh, what we have not done is to demonstrate uh, how we can collaborate and have changes um, from the remote repository to the local and from local to the remote. And that is what we would be doing here. Uh, this video is based upon lesson number eight, uh, which is titled Collaborating in the Software Carpentries uh, Lessons and uh, Lecture Notes. And uh, I encourage you to follow along and pause the video wherever necessary uh, until you get comfortable with this idea of collaborating. Um, clearly, collaborating involves more than one person. And uh, I will have to simulate this environment for you uh, in this video. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be like collaborating with a different person. Uh, this scenario could also be sim uh, something like you're working at your workstation uh, and then when you go home, you're on a different machine and then you want to work on the same code base from your home computer. So this could be applicable. This video lecture uh, could also be applicable for uh, that scenario as well, for a different scenario. Now, clearly, I'm just one person here and I have to simulate this environment for you. So we have already created from my GitHub repository. We have already created and pushed uh, this project um, to this uh, computer. Uh, to this browser to this github repository and it's in this my in my github account um, now i in order to show this collaboration aspect i'm going to show you how um, a different user can use um, uh, or can work on this project okay so what i am going to do here is to um, go on to a different browser window and uh, go to github.com and log in with the secondary account that I got. So I made two accounts and I can, that is to simulate two people. So that is my secondary GitHub account. And as you can see, I have no repositories here so far. It's just uh, an introduction page, which gives me like basic guide on using GitHub. Um, so, so far I have no repositories uh, here, but let's say I am on a different machine. Um, and uh, how do I uh, start working on this new project? So I'm going to open up a new bash window or bash terminal. This is to simulate that I'm on a different, I'm a different person. Okay. Um, and um, we are going to be working on a new directory here. This is my home directory. And whereas the other person was working on the planets directory in the desktop. Okay, so the planets directory in the desktop, you can see that right here. Um, that is where we have been working on. And, but this collaborator has opened up, this is assuming that this is their computer. Uh, then and they are working on their home drive. Okay, so how can this collaborator work? Um, on this pro on this project so the easiest thing to do uh, is to give the collaborator access to the uh, repository so I'm going to do exactly that so I'm going to say um, Go to collaborators and I'm, it may ask your password again when you try to add collaborator to your project. Um, so I'm going to say collaborator and I'm going to type the username, the GitHub username of this person who is my collaborator. And I say add a collaborator. Now when this is being done, it will require that uh, uh, credential so an email would be sent to this collaborator and they will have to uh, accept this um, accept this so an email would be sent so instead of uh, logging to my email let me see if uh, I can accept the link on my collaborators account so right now this 
is the new browser window i mean in cognito mode so i'm going to say this is my invitation so and this says ah krishna kumar g 1984 invited you to collaborate would you like to accept or decline so uh, in a normal course an email would have been sent to you but because i didn't want to like i'm just doing a practice video here for this course i didn't want to open my email and go through all the details so you could also simulate the same moment and that's what i have done for you so i have copied the email copied the link here uh, that's the invitation link and gone to and now i'm in my collaborators browser or collaborators computer and pasted this in you could also personally email it to them you can whatsapp them you can send it to them in any way this particular link but they have to be logged into their github account to see the link and then they say accept invitation okay so when it when it when they accept the invitation it now says you have push access to this repository that means that you can make changes in your local machine and start pushing to this same repository that you're sharing with this other person okay right so now we got the push access uh, to this repository let me refresh this again and now the next thing to do to start working on this project is to get all the contents of this project the entire repository to your local machine so the process to do that is called cloning so i can clone this whole repository again you have two options here for cloning you can use either https or ssh if your collaborator on their local machine have set up ssh access keys then uh, that will wor work uh, but otherwise HTTPS should work uh, except that it will ask you to enter your login credentials when trying to work on the new machine okay so I copy this is the icon for copying this access link and then we're going to do the next command so this is your collaborator and I'm on the collaborators machine on the home drive uh, Imperial's home drive here so um, that's the the next command to clone this project or to get a copy of the, all the changes that the original person has been working on is a clone command and uh, I did something wrong here so let me go back and try to fix it so this so I copy this and I try to go into the collaborators machine git clone and then paste yes sorry there was some uh, confusion earlier when i copied stuff this should work so git clone and this so the, because the project is public anybody can clone the project but only the collaborators are allowed to push back their changes into the project okay so or the project does not give right access to everybody the project does give indeed read access to everybody if it's a public project if it's a private project until explicitly invited nobody gets right access or read access to your process okay so with that done this is my collaborators machine and i am cloning this into the planets folder in my home drive okay so that command will bring down all the work that we have done so far into the um, planets folder now the next thing to do is to change the directory into the planets folder and now you are in a git repository on, and this is a different machine remember I'm simulating a collaborator here uh, or your own uh, home machine or work machine anyway this is a different machine to this other machine that we have been working on that's the premise that's the so it's a simulated environment here so um, I can do all the git commands here basically the entire git history of the project is now available for this collaborator so git log should tell that there have been all these commits a git ignore file was created that's the last commit okay so there have been all these four commits done so far all the standard commands should work i'm now going to clear my screen using Control l and i'm going to say git log one line to have a quick glimpse of the project what has been done ah it says that the head now points to master there is also something called as an origin which points to the master branch in the remote repository and currently the origin is pointing towards the head pointer okay all these things basically essentially it says that a remote repository is set up and ready to go so i don't the collaborator doesn't have to again reinitialize a remote repository so they immediately start making changes to the project if necessary okay so let's actually do that right now so i'm going to make something uh, let's say i'm a collaborator clearly i am interested in working on a different planetary mission so i'm going to be working on let's say pluto dot text okay 
so Pluto is one of the uh, last discovered planets. I don't know if that statement is completely true, but I'm going to go with that for my initial draft. Um, so I wrote Pluto.txt. Okay, so this is a Git repository. There's no need to reinitialize. When we clone the project, we already get the entire Git configuration. Clearly, you have to configure Git um, uh, your username and uh, account details. Uh, now that is very difficult to show. So this, I mean, your configuration uh, because I'm on the same machine um, where this video is being recorded. The configuration will have my user details. Uh, no, hold on. It actually gets my other email account. So I have a university uh, email account pro provided my, by my former university. By my so yes, it looks like uh, I get a different username uh, here. Probably I can configure this project's username. Git config user dot name. Krishna and collaborator. Let me see if that will work. This is not a global configuration. This is just a project specific configuration. So uh, if that works, then git config dash dash list should say uh, no that uh, yeah user dot name. OK, we'll have to see which one takes precedence. Um, I think the later one takes precedence. Uh, but uh, we'll have to see uh, that. So let's see. Uh, there is um, Pluto as a file created by the collaborator. Now the collaborator runs git status and it says, okay, Pluto is to be added to the project. So the collaborator adds Pluto to the project and commits it with a commit message saying uh, started adding nodes about Pluto. Okay, right, and the collaborator now can simply do git push, and that should push back all the changes because we have given the collaborator the right access to the project, writing access, and the collaborator accepted the invitation. There should be no changes, uh, or there should be no problems in pushing uh, back to the uh, repository. That means that the collaborator also has right access. So if I go into the incognito window and refresh this page, sees that started adding notes about Pluto. Yay! Okay, so the collaborator is able to see that in their GitHub account. Let's look at the uh, the planets repository in. The original users account and it says five commits. Yep, and it says started adding notes about Pluto. So the remote repository has now been updated. Okay, so let's come back now to the original user. Okay, on their workstation. Okay, and they are in the C users desktop uh, planets folder, which is completely different from the collaborator's machine, right? The collaborator is working on their own local machine and they're working off. The hard uh, for the from the home drive um, on their machine. I am simulating two different users here. Uh, that should be clear by now. Um, so yes, so the remote repository has now been updated with all these changes. Um, there have been five commits added, and both the collaborator and the original user can go to their web interface, log in with their credentials, and see that look. Okay, there's been some new notes added about Pluto. It's a completely new text files, and that is now ready uh, for working uh, working on. So now the original user uh, can just okay. I've just cleared my screen. Now the original user can do git pull, and it brings down all the changes from the remote repository to this machine. So all the changes have now been synced. Okay. So if I now look. Uh, I've just cleared my screen and if I now ask for ls command you can see that in addition to the mars.txt which we have been working on which the original user has been working on in their machine you can see that pluto.txt has been created okay and now we can rinse and repeat the same idea so I now start to work on mars.txt again because that's my sub area of research I'm a Martian expert Okay, um, original user 
contributes uh, if I can get the spelling right contributes more to Mars.txt okay so write that out exit um, an interesting thing to note would be to ask for git log so git log would tell you who made uh, the changes aha there you see the now we can exactly identify who made the changes so in this particular case the um, myself my uh, my doppelganger uh, who is a collaborator with this different email id made the last change about pluto and that is helpful okay to know and this is helpful when there are many people working on the project if they if each of them have configured their git um, configuration correctly with the informative um, uh, with, the, with, the, with clear information on the username and password then it's helpful for all the collaborators if they are syncing the project files on different machines and on uh, and if they are collaborating with the multiple people this is very helpful to know who made which commit so then they can get in touch with them and ask them uh, any questions about the commit if they have any right so I'm going to now clear the screen and I'm going to add mars.txt to the repository again, all the changes. Git commit um, made a um, minor addition to mars.txt. Okay, so you, we are working on the original author is working on mars.txt and the new author is working on uh, pluto.txt. So there's no problem here in each of them. Let's say you're working on a research paper and you're working on one file and the other person is working on another file. Clearly, there's no problem here and you can work independently and you can see each other's workflow work. Um, so the next step is to push and uh, the original user clearly made the github repo so they have right access to it so if i refresh this page you can see that uh, the minor addition commit shows up the original user contributes more okay and um, if i go to the new users the collaborators github repo uh, then you can also see that that has happened okay therefore the new user as well so if i refresh this um, I see that yeah the new user also gets uh, access to this um, in their github repo okay so now we go to the new users computer and the new user does a git pull and it goes to the web and then pulls all the changes and therefore it says one files changed there's a new insertion and now if the new user or the collaborator asks for a, um, seeing the contents of the mars.txt it says that the original user has contributed more so this way uh, each uh, user and if there are many more than two that's no problem they all can be in sync with each other uh, and they can understand what's the work they can understand the bigger okay so that is the collaborative workflow. So you update the local repo with git pull, make your changes and git commit them and git push it back. And the other user starts pulling them down on their local machine. So this is a very bare bones workflow, but things can get quite complicated rather soon. And we're going to look at um, merge conflicts when you're working on the same portions of your project, then how uh, conflicts may arise. And we're going to look at how to resolve them um, in the next set of videos. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.